Hi, so in this video we will be going to see that how the retransmission timeout timer calculation has done in TCP. So let's start. Now to calculate the retransmission timeout timer uh, we need to calculate the RTT. Now RTT means the round trip time. So RTT is basically calculated on the basis of RTT. So let us first understand that how the TCP actually works. We know that uh, TCP is a reliable protocol and uh, whenever any transmission is made by TCP all the transmission will be acknowledged. So how it works? So the TCP sends a segment in the front of the sending queue it starts a timer. So it actually maintains one timer it employs one timer we call it as a round trip timer so whenever any segment is delivered it is also to be uh, kept in the queue and then the timer starts that so the moment the segment is delivered to the destination the timer will start and this timer is having one expiry uh, duration and before the timer get expired if the acknowledgement is not received then whatever is placed at the front of the queue will again be retransmitted. So this is how the retransmission takes place. So whenever there is no acknowledgement before the expiry of the timer, then the retransmission is done. So if the timer expires, the first segment of the queue will be again uh, retransmitted. But when a segment are committed cumulatively acknowledged. Now one thing to keep note that segments and their acknowledgements are not one to one relationship. What does it mean? It means that when you are sending the first segment it does not mean that you will immediately get the acknowledgement of the first segment. You may get the acknowledgement of the cumulative segment. So what does it mean? Let's say you deliver the first segment and then deliver the second segment and then deliver the third segment and you will get the acknowledgement of the as a four that means already the three segments have been received and now the fourth segment has been expect has been expected so the segments are not having one to one relationship with the acknowledgement so if any segment is getting acknowledged before the timer get expired then uh, the timer will stop and again the the segment which has been acknowledged will be removed from the queue and the next segment will be placed at the front of the queue and the timer will again start. What does it mean? It means that this is the queue and uh, here 1, 2 and 3 segments have been delivered and before the expiry of the, the timer let's say we received the acknowledgement number 4 that means now this has been removed from the queue and now the fourth will be will be coming at the front of the queue and again the timer will start and it's keep on working like this now let's say this fourth is uh, delivered and then you get the acknowledgement five and then what will happen if it is received before the expiry of the timer then this will be removed from the queue and now uh, the receiver is expecting for the fifth segment but now there is no segment is pending on the queue so timer will stop but if there are more segments waiting then the next segment will come in the front and the timer will again restart and this is how the entire process will work now to calculate the retransmission timeout timer values we need to calculate various round trip time so we have measured rtt that is measured round trip time a smoothened round trip time and the deviated round trip time. Well, what does it mean? Round trip time basically means that how long it will take to deliver a segment and then receive an acknowledgement. So if this is a scenario, one segment is delivered to uh, to other side and you get the acknowledgement. So this time is set to be a round trip time and this we need to calculate. So the time to deliver the segment and see the acknowledgement is called RTT and we call it as a RTTM. This is a measured round trip time. 
now one thing to keep a note that this round trip time will not be same with every delivery because it is not sure that every time you get the acknowledgement at the same time it depends on many factors that how the uh, segments are consumed at the receiver site what is the status of the network how much congestion is there so this values keep on uh, varying that means we need to uh, keep in consideration these factors and we need to bring more components to to get a accurate status of the uh, of the round trip so uh, measured rtt is basically the actual time that that actually uh, noticed uh, for delivery and receiving the acknowledgement now there is one term called a smoothened rtt because we know that this measured rtt will not be the same every time so we want to calculate the weighted average to to uh, to get more appropriate result of the rtt we will be going to uh, get the weighted average which is basically the average of the rttm the measured rttm and the previous rtts uh, calculated then we have a deviation deviation is also uh, considered for the calculation because we need to uh, also see that how this deviation is happening over various transmission so all these three type of uh, rtt will be taken into consideration while calculating the effective rto at any point of time so let's see that how the entire calculation will work so this is how the calculation uh, of the rto is is done so it's more than rtt that is rtts so it's more than rtt we call it as a rtts so initially when we start the process when we start uh, delivering a segment from one side to other side or when we start the transmission originally we don't have any value for this rtts so initially means originally when when we start doing the communication here at this point of time rtt has no value but when you send the second segment at that time you need to calculate the rtts so after the first uh, delivery the rtts is calculated as rtts is equals to rttm because only you have calculated this rttm this is the actual uh, round trip time you have measured so rtts is also having the same value which is equals to rttm which you have measured but then onwards after the second after the uh, second uh, transmission of any segment the rtts will be calculated as 1 minus alpha into rtts this is a previous rtts plus alpha into rttm so alpha is a implementation dependent depending on the scenario on which kind of network uh, you are uh, applying the rto but the default value is 1 by 8 so you can say the rtts is calculated as 1 by 8 of the measured rtm and 1 by 7 of the smoothed uh, rtt so what does it mean it means when you are going to calculate the rtts at this point of time then you need to uh, use the rtts of the previous one means you will take the value of uh, rtts from here you will keep here and the rttm which has been measured so this is how we can uh, calculate the rtts similarly we have to also calculate the rttd this is a rtd deviation so initially when the communication starts there is no rtd defined so when you start the communication there is no rtds there is no rtd d but when you get the acknowledgement so this is rtt m and your next delivery will have rtd equals to 0.5 of rttm so at this point of time you have rttd is equals to 0.5 of rttm or you can say half of the rttm and then from the next uh, onwards from the, after this the next transmission the rttd will be calculated as 1 minus beta into rttd this is the previous rttd and the difference of the rtts and rttm the beta default value is 1 by 4 so if you are doing a calculation and the value of alpha and beta is not given to you 
then we will take the default value now this this is very important to note that in the TCP there is, can be only one RTT measurement in progress at any point of time so there will be only one RTT is used for the entire communication so when the two parties are communicating only one RTT will be will be active let's see that how to get the RTO value so initially when the uh, when this uh, transition starts we have one RTO defined based on the congestion at that point of time and then onwards we keep on recruiting the RTO based on the RTTS, RTTD and RTTM. So initially we have given some RTO value, we use that value and then later on we calculate the RTO by using this formula RTO equals to RTTS plus 4 time RTTD and the default values are 1 by 8 and 1 by 4 for alpha and beta respectively. So this is how we are going to uh, calculate the RTO by using the RTTS. So just keep in mind initially when you start the, 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 the transmission, when you start sending any segment to the other side, we are not provided by any RTTM, we have no RTTS, we have no RTTD, but we have only RTO given to us and then onwards after getting the acknowledgement this is the RTTM and then onwards we will calculate all these values and after getting all these values we will calculate the RTO at each uh, uh, transmission now RTO is basically a retransmission timeout timer which actually guides that when the packet to be retransmitted so the packet is delivered the timer starts and wait for the acknowledgement and if the acknowledgement is not received in the due time then the packet will be retransmitted so in general to calculate the RTO we follow this rule uh, by uh, which is based on RTTM, RTTS and RTTD but there are certain cases arises where we get some overlapping and and those kind of overlapping is resolved using the Kant's algorithm so in the later videos we will see that uh, if some overlapping or issues are arise in this communication then how it can be resolved and a solution for this kind of problem is given by the Khan and that is said to be a Khan's algorithm okay okay now let us quickly summarize so we need to calculate the RTDS, RTD and RTDM to get the RTO value so initially when we start uh, doing the transmission the RTDS and RTD will be taken as a zero and also the RTTM is actually zero because we have not measured the round trip time and then when we get the first acknowledgement then we find the RTTM that is the actual time uh, that is taken by the message to be delivered and can get the acknowledgement and the RTTS will be calculated uh, in the first time as RTTM so RTTS will be equals to RTTM and RTTD equals to the half of RTTM and then onwards from the second uh, transmission onwards we will use this formula so uh, from the second onward means from the second third fourth and for all further uh, transmission we will use the given formula okay now we'll see the numerical on this so this is a scenario given and initially we are assuming that the RTO value is six seconds so when we start the transmission we assume that it is six seconds and then onwards we have to calculate every time so it is given here when the packet is uh, delivered to establish a connection the value is 6 means RTO is here whose value is 6 seconds now this packet is delivered as a request to make a connection and it gets an acknowledgement for this packet and this re response comes in 1.5 second means your RTTM is 1.5 so initially when you see this is a very initial case you have no RTTM, no RTTD, no RTTS only this is given to you then after one means when you start the connection you get RTTM equals to 1.5 and RTTS is also equals to RTTM as we have discussed and RTTD is equals to half of RTTM and you use the formula and you get RTO equals to 4.5 so when you see 4.5 means actually 
your congestion is now better. Earlier it is 6, now it becomes 4.5, means you have to wait for a less time. This is also the meaning. If it is 4.5 and the next time you get it is 2.6, that means your congestion is now improved. You mean it, it is re reduced. Traffic is smooth, that is the meaning. So now it is 4.5. Now let's say after some time this packet is delivered. So RTO equals to 4.5 is delivered. The meaning of this is that you will deliver this packet and you will not resend before 4.5 seconds. If 4.5 seconds is passed and you not get the acknowledgement, then only you have to resend the packet. This is the meaning of RTO. So this packet is delivered and it is waiting for the acknowledgement and the acknowledgement is coming back in 2.5 seconds. Okay. Then what is the calculation? Now we have to calculate the RTO for the next transmission. This will give you the scenario of the present form. At that extent, what is the situation of congestion? So here, RTTM equals to 2.5 and you use the formula 1 minus alpha into RTTS. Now here you use the value of previous RTTS. You know in this formula we are using RTTS as well. You remember this? So when you calculate this formula, so you, you use the previous value of RTTS and then you get the new value of RTTS. And this is the new value. Similarly, you can do this and you can do this and this is the value means it was 4.5 now 4.74 that means now little bit congestion has increased. Now when you send the packet you have to wait for 4.74 seconds to, uh, to means deliver a next packet if you don't get the acknowledgement. This is the meaning. So 2.5 is RTTM and then RTTS you can calculate. So here you have seen 1 minus alpha into RTTS and this RTTS is the previous RTTS. This is 1.5 you have checked from here. Hmm? And then you can get this 1.625 so we have written here 1.625. Similarly you can calculate this value and this value. Okay, This is how we can find the things. So I believe that this you have understood.